Oh, I keep bumping into this thing. Hey art lovers, hey art people. Welcome to the video and welcome back to the channel. It has been a minute. <laughs> um, the good news for today is that NASA, I just saw this recently, like just two days ago, released a time lapse over the past like 10 years of the, t the sun's surface. And it is gorgeous, like so pretty to look at. Um, I think it's really amazing. So definitely go check that out. Get some positivity um i will link that in the bio um or not i will link that in the video description i thought instagram on the brain um anyway i've started or i'm starting a new series new project um celebrating like inner strength because i think it's a really incredible thing that we're all showing a lot of right now actually because of the pandemic and everything else going on in the world and so I'm really excited to share that process with you guys. So I'm starting with a totally blank page. It's got a few lines on it that I need to strengthen, but other than that, beginning stages, okay? And I'm going to bit by bit transform this blank page, mostly blank page, into a beautiful work of art. And I'm not sure how many images will be in this series, but I'm thinking like five or six, right? I think it's gonna be really awesome when it's done. Um, and I am feeling pretty excited about it. So I'm gonna start today, like I said, and just bit by bit. So today I'm going to, like I said, strengthen the borders. I say like I said a lot, but I'm gonna strengthen the borders and then, um, you know, add like, get things situated, like position, where I want it to look. And you will have to bear with me because I mean, I see artists who, I've got my handy ruler here. I see artists who have like very confident strokes. Like they just have it. Like they put pencil to paper and the image is just done. So um, I don't work that way. I know I'm not the only one who doesn't, but sometimes it feels that way. But there's gonna, with me, it's like, it's a process. It's a back and forth between me and this page. So don't be surprised if um, over these next few hours, videos, whatever, however, whatever format this takes, there will be changes. But I think that that's what makes it fun. So I'm just gonna dive right in. I'm feeling good. All right, so I'm doing one inch borders. I know that's super, super exciting, and you guys can't wait to watch me draw straight lines, but this is how it all begins. because framing this within an 18 by 24 size page is proving really hard because I'm used to framing within like an eight by 10. So I'm getting used to like what space I have. Okay, you can't see me. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it's difficult. So, but I'm trying not to like backtrack too much and I'm trying to just, um, I'm trying not to have to erase everything basically is what I'm saying. So right now I am sort of carving out and it does feel like sculpting. Well, I've never, I'm not a sculptor, but it does feel like I'm finding the image within the page a little bit. I'm just trying to figure out, okay, where does this face belong in all this space? So it's kind of, it's fun. I think the hardest part of like drawing this part of a person is deciding 
What kind of shirt are they gonna wear? Because I feel like clothes distract a lot from, it's kind of hard to talk and draw at the same time. It's gonna take practice. Clothes distract from like the aesthetic, right? So like if I'm trying to make a point with this drawing and then you're like focused on the t-shirt, then it, like if you're like, oh, the t-shirt's cute. Uh, it's hard finding the balance between, cause it's not like I wanna put the subject of this in an ugly shirt. You feel me? So it's like, I'm rambling, but basically what I'm saying is I don't want the clothes to take away from the image, but they gotta be there. Or else it becomes like, why is this person nude? But, you know, it's really easy to come up with reasons that someone's naked. I could say like, oh, like the subject, like this picture is talking about how it feels to be exposed and like, you feel naked in the face of um, opposition. <laughs> uh, that's why I think like, I don't know, what would you guys say? I would say like 30% of being an artist. That might be low. Maybe 40% of being an artist is just getting good with words and figuring out how to explain why'd you do this i guess that's what i learned in college because critiques if you didn't have like purpose behind what you were doing it's like so why did you do this i mean because it looks good can only last you so long so i'm kind of defining where the hairline is going to be and if you're wondering i'm using a picture of myself as a reference um, Sometimes when I want to see what something looks like, I'll, like what an angle of a face will look like or something, I'll Google, but it can be kind of hard to get exactly the pose. These lines are distracting me. Let's get them out of here. It can be hard to find exactly the pose that I'm looking for to get, you know, the perspective just right and the, um, the proportions. <laughs> so I just use my face. And if you're wondering like what these lines are that I'm erasing, um, I don't think it needed. I think I ended up deleting that clip, but I drew like a broad like oval for where the face would be and a bust and like some lines for where the hair would be. And then from there, I Look at my reference and that's where I, I used that like broad sketch to determine where I would put like the more refined lines. I don't know if that's interesting to you guys, but now you know. <laughs> oh, did I just mess up? Okay, this is um this is fun. Okay. So the troublesome thing, I'm gonna have to use some creative liberty here because obviously my hair but my hair in this reference photo, I just took it so my hair is back. And I want to draw, I want my subject to have like full curly hair. A big old poof. Is my face really this skinny? Mm. That is crazy. I look like a slice of pizza. What are these sideburns? Sometimes I'm drawing faces and I'm like, have I ever even seen a face? Do I even know what a face is? Got some traps. I mean, I know my work isn't super, super grounded in like realism, but I do like, this is kind of where it, I have to remind myself it doesn't need to be perfect. But I like sometimes when I'm using a reference photo, I I find myself trying to make it exactly like the reference. And it doesn't need to be like that. And that's like this is kind of why I think um, for me, like getting 
The framework done and getting started is like the longest and most painful part of doing a drawing because once I have just like where everything goes, adding in like the face and the details of the hair and the surrounding stuff, that's easy. But like finding where it's gonna go on the page and where the proper like curves are, that's hard. I'm kind of curious if that's kind of how everyone feels when they're creating a drawing or painting or if that's just like, Mm, less general and more of a me thing. <laughs> okay, so now the question I'm asking myself is how much body is gonna go in here? So in my past work, this is kind of where I would stop I'd go from head to neck and then just kind of leave the rest white. I want to fill up this whole frame, which is why I gave myself borders and told myself everything in this space needs to have stuff in it. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of like I'm teaching myself how to do this as I make this video. Holding myself to like a higher artistic standard or like a different artistic standard. Cause there's no right or wrong. And I think my favorite art quote is Andy Warhol saying art is whatever you can get away with. And I um, read that in like his autobiography when I was in high school and kind of deciding that, it is hard when you can't see me. I was deciding that I wanted to go to art school like when I graduated high school. And one of my hesitations was like, well, like, I like what I do, but I don't know that like other people will be into it. I don't know if it's like art. And then I saw Andy Warhol's in his biography, that quote, that it's whatever you want it to be basically. And that kind of gave me like the push that I needed to say to myself, like, whatever, I'm just gonna fucking, I'm just gonna go for it people don't like it, that's okay. There's gonna be other people who do like it. So, this is the arm. This part is always so hard for me. So I'm gonna give myself, I don't know if I'll keep this shirt in, but this helps me kind of just figure out where everything's supposed to be. <laughs> Man, and if I thought, I was just saying sometimes I wonder if I've ever seen a face before. When I get to this part, like the chest, I'm like, I should be better at drawing this. Like this is, this is me. I should be good at drawing myself. Boobs. Side boob. Uh, okay, so here's the line of the shirt. And then the armpit. <laughs> Who doesn't love an armpit, right? Okay, so this is kind of where I'm gonna. Mm, fade out. This part is less important to me. Well, you can't even see it when I zoom in, so that's how you know. Um, but the face. I love drawing a good face. Um, okay, so. And then you guys know, if you've seen any of my stuff, that I love drawing hair. So I'm gonna give, I'm just gonna do the lines for where I want the hair to go. and drawing hair too because I can make it do things that my hair refuses to do. Uh, one of my friends cut my hair recently. So I am guilty of cutting my own bangs from time to time. And uh, before the pandemic, before the pandemic, that's how bad it is, I cut my own bangs. And I thought it looked fine. But then a friend of mine cut my hair recently and she was like, 
she was like holding it. She goes, is this where you cut your bangs? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, okay. <laughs> she was a lot nicer about it than like maybe a real, like not, but like a hairdresser who didn't know me would have been. Or maybe they wouldn't have even said anything. This is why I like having my girl do my hair because she'll, that look of shit, I will never cut my own bangs again. Um, I say that to say that because I cut my own bangs, I can't get it to do like that really nice side swoop. Like I honestly don't know what to do with the whole front of my head. Sometimes like if I do the pushback thing, my forehead looks huge and then if I do like the swoop, like I said, since I cut my own bangs, it just like doesn't look great. Anyway, you guys are like, Allison, why are you telling us about your bangs? This is an art channel. So anyway, <laughs> um, because I ruined, well not ruined, but because my hair isn't, doesn't behave the way I would like it to in real life, I can make it do whatever I want when I draw it. And this goes back to like, it doesn't have to be, it's not all about like hyper realism for me because like maybe no one's hair can do this except like maybe the Kardashians because they have like a committee for their hair. But from what I've seen and from what I've been able to accomplish with my own hair, uh, lines like this just don't happen. Now that I've said that with such like an absolute, I'm sure someone's gonna look at it and be like, my hair does that every day. Like, what are you talking about? So another fun thing to draw is the ear. I always, um, I always end up drawing an ear and then the hair, like, it ends up covering it. And I'm always like, no, I'm gonna have the ear because I spent time getting all those little like weird folds, making it look right. And then I, the way I do the hair just ends up covering it. That doesn't look great, but it's, it's there. I just wanna like define where the ear is. I have weird ears. Okay. All right, so the hair, I'm also gonna just give this person a lot more hair than I have. And don't, I have a ton of hair, I'm sure you've noticed, but it's not very long when it's curly. Um, so, but I want this person to have like long, long, long curly hair. That's my mission. That's my goal in life is to just have like, when my when I have my curls, to have it as long as it looks when it's straight. Okay. Look at this, we're making progress. Now I think, well I'm still not totally happy with this ear. Like what even, who came up with these, you know? Why are they so shabby? Why are they so shady? Okay, then there's this part. Honestly, just what I'm taking from like talking to myself about this drawing as I draw is that humans are weird and all the parts we have are strange. Mm -mm. Get this right. So now I'm just kind of refining um, the shapes here. Trying to get it close to this reference. Like the end result is not going to be a self portrait, but I like to just have it look like my reference, at least in like the shape of the face, so that when I do go in to add facial features, I'm not lost as to where they go. So I'm gonna do now 
like this line to define like this is the side. Here's the cheekbones. Here's where the mouth should end. I got a big mouth. You can tell. That's crooked. We'll figure it out. Here's the chin. Other cheek. I actually like love doing this. Like these little circles. I just think it's so fun. Here's the nose. I have a big nose too. Here's the side of the nose. The bridge. Um, forehead. Here's the forehead. And this is gonna be like the light is gonna be coming this way. Kinda like it is in this video. Alright, okay. Can you, okay, you can see them. It's hard to tell when I look at the camera like how much you guys can actually see. Okay. This is the eyebrow. <laughs> it's not gonna stay like that. And then here is the other eyebrow. Just got two. So much like when you're doing your eyeliner or filling in your brows, you know how one always looks like killer and it slays and it looks amazing and the other one looks like trash. It's kind of happening on my face right now. Um, yeah, I get that when I draw too, but I can fix it. And that's another thing that I like about drawing versus like real life. The same way I can make the hair as perfect as I want it to be, I can make the eyebrows as perfect as I want it to be, and I can make the eyeliner as perfect as I want it to be. And I credit my ability to draw for why, like, if there's one thing I can do with makeup, it's a good winged eyeliner. Can you tell? Should I start a beauty channel? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, okay. This part is fun. So like I said, these are much the same way I just at the beginning had like a big circle and then found the face within that shape. That's what I'm doing now. With this. Lips are fun. I think mouths and eyes are my favorite to draw. I bet a lot of people feel that way because they're just really beautiful features. Um, I started this lip way too low. Just because they're my favorite to draw doesn't mean I'm like, hmm, best at it. I'm gonna zoom out for a bit. I don't know why, I just felt like it. Okay. Well, this is quite an expression. <laughs> Boom, gorgeous, totally gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now that I've done that, I can like go in later or now or whenever I feel like and I can make it cute. But this is how it goes. This is the process, folks. All right, so this is my stopping point for today. I'm gonna be doing a little bit more each video. So if you wanna see this face turn into a pretty face, um, definitely watch um, the next one, it should be up pretty soon. I'm gonna try to do this. Uh, all right, I'm gonna say this out loud. I'm gonna try to do this every day. Maybe now that I've said it out loud, it will make me feel an obligation to do it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, let me know if you thought I talked too much. Let me know if you thought I didn't talk enough. Um, I'll probably just keep doing what I'm doing, but if I know you hate it, 
or love it. Maybe that will affect how nice I am. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling this out as I go along, just the way everyone does when they're doing something new. Um, but I am excited to work on this more and I'm excited to share that with you. So know that I'm only working on this in these videos. So it's kind of cool. It's like we're doing it together. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you.